The sound that we heard was a sonic boom produced by a military jet aircraft, likely a Sukhoi 30 according to sources, breaking through the speed of sound. There is apparently a top secret supersonic corridor in existence south of the city somewhere, top secret because nobody really wants to tell me where exactly it is located, where aircraft can undergo supersonic testing. After much ambiguity about the matter of speculation rife among Bangaloreans that anything from an earthquake to atmospheric conditions to interstellar aliens were responsible, the IA finally came out last night and admitted that one of its aircraft broke the sound barrier while the aircraft was apparently decelerating from supersonic to subsonic speeds uh, between 36 and 40,000 feet. Well, when an object flies through the air, it creates sound waves. The faster the object travels, the closer the sound wave patterns begin to get to each other. When an aircraft crosses the speed of sound, which is about 761 miles per hour or 1,225 kilometers per hour at sea level or more, commonly known as Mach 1, the sound waves end up colliding. And when they merge into a single shock wave, the result, a bona fide sonic boom. Sometimes people hear two booms, the first one they change in air pressure at the front of the aircraft reaches Mach 1 and a second boom when the tail of the aircraft passes through the sound barrier and air pressure returns to normal. You know, the US General George S. Patton once said that he who reaches the battlefield first is usually the winner. Speed usually dictates where that battlefield is. Of course, aircraft are also heavily reliant on speed to get in and get out of trouble. Speed is also critical for maneuvering, uh, for sustaining maneuvers, which are critical in the fine air, uh, fine art of uh, air combat. Now, for the longest time until 1947, breaking the speed barrier was a holy grail for aircraft designers. Now we have experimental aircraft that can fly up to six times the speed of sound. Oh yeah, you know the pilots don't hear anything because they're at the head of the shockwave. What we do know is the sonic boom happened in the morning at about 11 a.m. It was about uh, 9.35 p.m. when the Ministry of Defense tweeted uh, an admission that one of its aircraft was responsible. However, at 6.40 p.m., there had been another statement from IAF Training Command, which uh, speculatively and hilariously pointed out that finger pointed the finger at itself and HAL. Supersonic aircraft flying at normal operating altitudes uh, can exert uh, pressures of uh, one to two pounds per square feet. I mean the sonic boom. So buildings in good condition cannot necessarily be damaged. However, buildings in bad condition, yeah, can be affected. Animals can get disturbed by the boom and apparently going by yesterday, so can people. Volcanic explosions, meteorites racing through the atmosphere. However, scientists at the Indian Institute of Science ruled out these because, you know, well, you know, there have been no volcanic explosions that we know of recently. And if it had been a meteorite, however small, the entire city would have heard the boom. As Professor KP, KPJ Reddy of IAC, the BrahMos Missile Project, an all-round sonic wave expert pointed out, the narrow, the, the narrow path of the neighborhoods which actually heard the boom uh, yesterday indicates that an aircraft was uh, definitely responsible. <laughs>